This is the most groundbreaking inReach since the first inReach came out. On the outside, this is pretty much the same as the last version of the inReach Messenger. It still has SOS, messaging, weather reports, and tracking. It works best with the phone, but you can use most of the core functions with the little screen on the bottom here. So why does this cost almost double what the original Messenger cost? Well, on the outside, it might be the same, but on the inside, it is a very different device. Because going back to the first inReach up until the latest models like the 67 and Mini 2, inReach has always used Iridium short burst data. This, on the other hand, has a new set of guts in it. Instead of using short burst data, it uses Iridium messaging transport. It's something built on Iridium Certus, which is a higher speed product. And it's something you generally see in larger products like marine systems for Wi-Fi or drones. It's something that has a higher speed and I believe a lower latency than the Iridium short burst data that the older units have. Digging into some of the more technical docs, it wasn't just a simple modem switch for Garmin. I think they really had to rewrite a lot of how inReach works, not only to leverage the new system, but also to make it backwards compatible with the older devices. But from a practical standpoint, what you need to know about this new system is this. You can send more data back and forth. The old system allowed you to send about 160 characters. With this, it's much more. In general, it happens a little bit faster than before. And on the back end, it means that Garmin has to pay Iridium more money to send messages using this device than it does with the other one. That's probably reflected in the new subscription packages that Garmin put out a couple weeks ago. I'll put a link to the video I did on that underneath this video if you wanna check that out. So what does this all translate to in terms of how this actually works in the field? Well, I brought this out into a redwood grove, some coastal redwoods to make this a little bit challenging for the device and I tested it with my Garmin inReach Mini 2. First thing to know is that you can send a message that's 1600 characters over satellite using the Messenger Plus. If you send it to another Messenger Plus or somebody connected uh, not via satellite, so via Wi-Fi or data, they will get all 1600 characters. If you send it to another inReach that's on the short burst data system, which is every other inReach right now, that will get it in chunks. So it'll just break it apart in chunks. Each one of these chunks obviously costs a message on your receiving uh, inReach. So just a heads up there. There are still check-in messages on this, which work the same as they did before. You can send emojis now too, and it looks like you can send these from the older devices as well. So emojis back and forth. You can also do a tap back and a tap back works the same way as it does on a smartphone. You pick this little emoji. There's no, uh, it doesn't come off your message allotment to do a tap back. So there's no cost in doing these tap backs. The first real wow feature I thought was the voice messages. And I wasn't expecting to like this as much. Here's the deal, you can record your voice. You have to use your smartphone to do it. You can't talk into the device itself and you also can't talk into a Phoenix 8 that has voice control uh, using the messages app. I don't know why, but you can't. But you talk into the phone, you record a message 30 seconds and you send it. It sends just like the other messages. It does take a little bit longer. You get this little progress bar here. You can't send it to a uh, non inReach plus device, but it will go to any other messenger account that's connected via Wi-Fi or data. And the quality was good. Here's what I recorded. Redwood Grove. It looks pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to try to send this to another inReach device. I don't think it's going to work, but let's see what happens. And here's what it sounded like after receiving it. Redwood Forest or Redwood Grove. It looks pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to try to send this to another inReach device. I don't think it's going to work, but let's see what happens. Yeah. And just a note, if you try to send this to an older inReach using short burst data, it just doesn't go through until they connect again via Wi-Fi or cellular. And anyone can use these features in the Messenger app when connected to Wi-Fi and cellular as well. Now, I think this is going to be a great feature if you're in trouble because just talking for 30 seconds into this, I, I was able to say a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it is a lot of time. And if I'm trying to describe a situation where I am or a medical condition, this is gonna be super handy to convey the situation as opposed to typing a series or a group of 160 character messages. Also worth noting that Garmin Response, which is the, you know, the center that handles your emergency call, is set up to receive these voice messages and also the images, which I'll show you in a second. So that's a great thing too. So I think in an emergency where you need to provide more detail than um, you, know, you can just with text messages, this is gonna be a great feature. So let's look at the images, the pictures. There's two things you can do. You can, re you can pick a photo from your photo library or you can fire up a camera app. Firing up the camera app, you take a picture and you send it and it's the same thing. There's a progress bar. 
the resolution is the same uh, going out as going in. There's no degradation in the picture, even though the resolution going in isn't what my camera resolution is. It you know kind of dumbs it down a little bit, but the pictures looked really good. Otherwise, the other features on InReach are pretty much the same. You can include your location with your messages. You can share your map share page. You can get a weather report, although I can't see the extended option for the weather report where it gave you the hourlies out in advance. Uh, it looks like it's just weather uh, and you can get a marine if you're close to water. Live tracking works the same. On the website, there's a little thing where it says you can share your course. I thought that maybe you could share the course that you're navigating, but it looks like that just means your map share page, but still a very handy feature to have. And otherwise, all of these things are pretty much the same as they were before. Now, the different message protocol inside here is not the only internal change. It also transmits at a whopping 9.33 watts. Compare that to the original messenger, which transmits at 3.89 watts, and compared to a regular PLB, transmits at 5 watts. Now, it's not apples to apples necessarily because these are using different systems, and all these radio waves travel at the speed of light, and I've used much lower tr powered uh, devices than they've gotten through before. But what I found that effectively higher transmit wattage increases the strength and the range, and for me, that means a little bit more reliability, especially when using it in a heavily forested area. Now, the devices I took here were the Messenger Plus and the Mini 2, and compared to the Mini 2, the Messenger Plus is definitely a little bit quicker in general but it's nothing that's groundbreakingly quicker not blazing fast compared to it maybe like 20 30 percent faster on average but they're both generally getting messages out in under two minutes generally somewhere in the 30 second to one minute range and as I saw earlier, the images and voice notes have a little progress bar. They generally take a little bit longer to send. In one case, it took almost 10 minutes to send an image here. And a couple minutes later, it took under a minute. So there is some variability. Now, how quickly you get a message back and how quickly this all continues to happen is based on something called messaging mode, which is essentially a battery management mode. There are two settings. One is performance, and in performance, it is continuously connecting to the satellites, checking back and forth. And I think this is similar to what the iPhone does. You know, when you point it and you get the green signal, it's always connected. You can go back and forth, and when you don't, you can't. And then there's also low power mode and low power mode sends the message. It'll check for messages shortly after a send and then it'll check every hour or so, which is what the older in reaches do as well. And that's going to help, uh, you know, obviously conserve the battery. Here are the numbers that Garmin is reporting for the battery drain for each mode. My real world experience was highly variable. You could see here on this test that I did in the redwoods where there's a lot of tree cover and they're you know struggling at times to go through. There were times the messages didn't go through for several minutes and the battery went down quite significantly in this case. This was in performance mode. Uh, you know, it wasn't, wasn't great if you kept doing messages back and forth it would probably drain down pretty quickly. Now, I've also used this where I'm just out hiking or walking with it, and I just have 10 minute tracking intervals, not sending any messages otherwise, and the battery didn't even go down a percentage point in about three or four hours. So I think a lot of the battery chew on this comes down to, is it connected to the satellite? And if it's not, like if you're hiking with it in performance mode and it's going in and out of connection, trying to connect again, that's gonna burn it down, sending messages back and forth, especially in a challenging environment, which is what all of these satellite communicators tell you right in the handbook. I've never experienced that maybe as profoundly as I have on this device, um, but you know, it's to be expected and it happens on all of these satellite devices. Garmin says you can get, I think, 250 uh, messages, photos, and voice messages back and forth, but it does chew down quite a bit. I would probably put it in low power mode if I'm just hiking and if I'm you know, texting back and forth with somebody and I know I'm doing it, I'd probably switch it to performance mode if it was important that I get those updates quickly. Another change on this guy is that you can now use this with the Garmin Explore app. So with the original Messenger, for whatever reason, it only worked with the Messenger app on your phone. Yes, everything is called Messenger. With the Messenger Plus, you can now use it with Garmin Explore. And what that effectively does is it makes the GPS uh, on the Explore app this as opposed to the phone GPS, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. I tried it out. It wasn't great experience. Um, I created a course on my Garmin Explore app and I went to navigate with it. 
Garmin Explore app, I think, needs an update. If you look at these topo active maps compared to something like Gaia GPS, it's just not even close, which is why I don't use the Explore app much. Um, but it does connect, and I thought I might get some kind of turn alerts or might be able to see myself on a map, on a course map, on the inReach, or sorry, on the Messenger Plus like I do on the Mini 2, uh, but that wasn't the case. I didn't get any kind of guidance, even though it said it was navigating on here. It's navigating via the Explore app. I didn't get any turn by turn alerts when it came up to a junction. The only thing I did get was I did get an alert when I got to the end of the hike or the hike course that I had in Garmin Explore. So not something I would use with navigation or for navigation. Nice, nice that I have it, but you know, not the greatest thing. It does have a new trackback uh, system or new trackback interface on this. I tried to use it and I did it on this hike where I started about a mile before, probably hiked about 20, 30 minutes. And uh, those points weren't in the track backlog here. I don't know why I thought it saved track backlogs for 24 hours, but they weren't in here. I just tried it to one of these shorter track back points and it's the same thing. You get, so uh, you can follow the compass here and you get a little alert when you get to the end. Not the most handy thing. I don't really think track backs work that great on a device like this. Track back works great on a Garmin watch where it's recording track points, you know, every second or two and you could follow the actual track. When it's doing it every 10 minutes, not as helpful, better than nothing, yes. I did compare the tracks with this to the Garmin Phoenix 8, which I also recorded here. Garmin Phoenix 8 is multi-GNSS, multi-band. Uh, this I had on multi-GNSS and it, you know, it's okay. It's not multi-bands, the plus, but it's acceptable. Again, I wouldn't use this necessarily as a navigation device. I think if you're sending track points using live track, this thing is gonna be fine. The other feature the Messenger touts is this reverse charging. And the idea is because this device depends on your cell phone so much to get the most out of the functionality, if your cell phone is dying, you can hook your phone up to this device and reverse charge it. It'll charge it for a number of minutes and it won't work if the device is under 25%, I think. Um, I tried to use it and it just wouldn't work. It drained the battery down a ton on the Messenger and then it went off because it went below 25% and I didn't get any boost on my phone, which is a uh, Google Pixel 9. So I don't know if this works. It wouldn't be something I would depend on in a situation that required uh, you know, saving my life. I think overall, just as a general rule with any piece of gear you get, but especially these things, is you should try them out first and make sure they work as expected. Don't depend on something like this when you get out in an emergency situation, but that charging feature didn't work. And go check out my friend Rick's channel, Outdoor Emergency Tech. He used to be called Hiking Emergency Beacon, but Rick did some tests with the last version of the Messenger and reverse charging and got some mixed results. If you want to dive into that, I'll put links to that underneath this video so you can check it out. For me, I just bring an external battery with me and I'm not really going to rely on this reverse charging. So I wish it worked. Didn't work for me this time. Maybe it'll be fixed in an update. Who knows? That's how it is now. So let's get to the core question. Should you get this? Before I answer that though, can you please support this channel by using my links below to buy anything on Amazon or REI? This is not a free tester. This is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money with your help. I have a Patreon account. You can help me do these free or these unbiased, um, not free, these unbiased reviews and just tell you the truth about these things. Um, it helps me out a ton if you can support me and I depend on that to do this. So thank you for everyone who supports me and made this possible. So talking about unbiased reviews, should you get this? I think unless you have a specific need to send photos or voice messages, the answer is probably no. The core you know, idea of inReach sending SOS messages and messages hasn't really changed since the first alarm units. Those still work and they work good and it works maybe a fraction slower. Maybe some of the features aren't quite as dialed in as these newer versions, but unless you have a specific need and you, you're good with the version you have now of the inReach, keep your old inReach not really worth it. If money's not an object and you just wanna get the best uh, product and you had a messenger before, then yeah, sure, get this one and you can send a voice message and a photo if there's an emergency. Uh, but otherwise, I wouldn't really get this. What I'm excited to get is I'm excited to get the new version of the GPS map 67i, which whatever it's gonna be, 68i. 
that uh, would probably is going to have the um, you know the new system in there, and maybe we'll even have like a simple camera. It doesn't have to be a camera that competes like with the iPhone or anything. It can be a simple camera where I can take a picture of like a bloody leg or a junction or something like that. I don't care about sharing selfies. I just want to be able to send a picture or a voice message note. Uh, you know, if there's an emergency, maybe there's a microphone in there too. That would be awesome. Uh, we'll see what happens when that comes out. Obviously, I will let you know about it. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask away. And uh, if you have experiences yourself, let me know about them below and uh, help out the community. Let them know as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe and I will see you out on the trails.